What's up everybody? My name is Jacob. And if nobody said it to you yet, let me be the first to say Merry Christmas! Joy to the world, the Lord has come. We all know what Christmas is about, right? It's about Christmas pie! Or Christmas is actually about a big guy in a red suit. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Christmas is about watching movies. Truth is, Christmas is about a lot of things, but there is one thing that makes this whole season worth celebrating. You know what I'm talking about. It's the presents. Let's see what we got this week. Oh. This little baby is what all the fuss is about. This is Christmas. Christmas is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. You'd think that a gift from God would come in a larger package, not just a baby. There's gotta be more to it than just that. You're right, there's a lot more to it. And it all starts in Bethlehem. I'll see you later. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Mary's world had been turned upside down. Though she was an ordinary girl living in an unimportant town, God had sent an angel to visit her. God is very pleased with you. Me? You're talking to me? You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high God. Mary was probably shocked, overwhelmed, and maybe fearful, but she chose joy. She chose to trust that God loved her so much, he had given her an important part to play in his story. I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. Just as the angel had said, Mary became pregnant, and the months raced by. Mary and her new husband, Joseph, prepared for the brand new baby to arrive. A cradle. I'll make him the most beautiful cradle you've ever seen. Joseph was a carpenter and took pride in creating smooth tables and sturdy cartwheels. But his work was soon interrupted. Mary, Joseph, and every person in the tiny town of Nazareth streamed out of their homes. A messenger on a dusty horse skidded to a stop in the small town market. Is this really a town? It doesn't deserve a dot on the map. As the people of Nazareth watched from a careful distance, the messenger pulled out a scroll and cleared his throat. Hear ye, hear ye. Caesar Augustus orders that everyone must go to their town of origin to be counted. Can't you just count us now? One. Two, three. No, no. The counting must be done properly and in order so we can make you pay lots of taxes. Farewell, and by that I mean good riddance. Mary and Joseph and their neighbors were left <coughs> coughing in the dust. Joseph, we'll have to go to Bethlehem where your family is from. I'll go. You can't travel right now. Of course I can. Absolutely not. A short time later, Mary and Joseph set off on the long road to Bethlehem. Perhaps they recalled the words of the prophet Micah. Bethlehem, you might not be an important town in the nation of Judah, but out of you will come for me a ruler over Israel. It's possible Mary rode on a donkey, or she might have walked right alongside Joseph. Either way, the journey took nearly a week and camping wasn't very comfortable for a woman about to have a baby. Please tell me your cousins will have a bed for us. Great Aunt Ada is the perfect hostess. But when they reached Bethlehem, the little town was neither silent nor still. It looks like everyone else came home too. <sighs> well, if Aunt Ada doesn't have room, there's always Cousin Gideon. He, oh, he makes an excellent pigeon pie. But not a single one of Joseph's relatives had a spare room or an extra bed. Please, just anywhere. This baby is coming soon. At last, someone found them room. 
in a place where the animals stayed? Absolutely not. We'll take it. Mary and Joseph did everything they could to get the space ready for a new baby. Clean hay, fresh water, and in a short time, Mary's baby was born. It's a boy! His name is Jesus. Mary tore a clean cloth into wide strips and tightly wrapped her baby to keep him warm and cozy. No cradle? Where will he sleep? Put fresh hay in the animal's feeding trough. We'll lay him in there. What about the sheep? They don't mind. Mary lay her tiny baby in the clean hay, the king of the whole world, sleeping in a manger next to the animals. He's perfect. Yes, he is. In the most unexpected place, at the most unexpected time, God had shown his love. He sent his very own son as a baby to rescue the whole world. Do you want to know what Christmas is really about? Ho, ho, ho! No! Christmas is about love. Around 2,000 years ago, God saw that the world needed help, and he loved the world so much that he sent this baby. But he is way more than just a baby. You see, Jesus would grow up and live a perfect life, and even though he didn't deserve it, out of love, he would die on a cross to pay for the sins of the world. And that was just the help we needed. That was just the love we needed. Jesus made it possible for us to have a relationship with God. Jesus saved us. So, while you're celebrating this year, while you're singing and eating pie and opening presents, don't forget this present that God gave to us. Don't forget this one thing. God loved us so much that he gave us a savior. So, you know what? It's Christmas. Let's have the biggest party ever. Who's with me? Yeah, let's party. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. Yeah. We're going shopping for that Christmas pie. Ooh, I need that. I need this. I need Christmas break.